So, yeah, I figured why not do, like, a best games of the year list, too. I mean, I, I primarily we do movies on this channel, but, I mean, we dip into games every now and then. It couldn't hurt to at least kind of share a little bit of what I played this year. Uh, granted, I, I generally play games to kind of unwind or in between movie reviews or things like that, but it is something that I still care a lot about and very passionate for. Um, and I thought maybe, you know, just real quick, just like a top five. I think a top five would, would work well. Um, we'll do, you know what? We'll do a five best, and we'll do a five worst. Um, that way, it's still kind of get them, we'll get them both out of the park in one video. So um, yeah, here's here's the best and worst of what I play this year. A quick honorable mention goes to Crypt of the Necro Dancer, a rhythm-based dungeon crawler available on Steam. Crypt of the Necro Dancer has you exploring randomly generated caves and dungeons to the beat of the outstandingly addicting soundtrack, or to your own library by importing your music to the game. Necro Dancer was a game that caught my attention at PAX two years ago, and following up to it to its release this year has been a worthwhile journey. As for the actual top five, number five of my best goes to South Park The Stick of Truth. If you told me 15 years ago that there'd be a South Park game that didn't run like ass and was actually funny, I'd have you committed. And after many delays, people's faith was tested a little bit, but all's well that ends well. Stick of Truth stands tall and true as being the best South Park game in existence. Largely in part due to the direct involvement of the show's creators, the humor is just as snappy and witty as one would expect from South Park, and the graphics... <laughs> It sounds so weird to praise graphics that animate like epileptic cardboard cutouts, but it really is quite impressive that the game looks exactly like the show. My only real beef with the game in general is that it's a bit too easy. After the alien abduction level, I was practically sleepwalking through combat. That aside, Stick of Truth is a comedy game that's actually funny and not annoying, while also being a kick-ass entry into the RPG genre. Next up, I have Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. The simple storytelling with the gorgeous graphics and mechanics make Shadow of Mordor an obvious entry into any top 5 of the year list. The upgrades you receive change your combat strategies dramatically, the acting across the board is solid, and the Nemesis system sets a new bar in third-person action-adventure games. I had some issues with the combat clipping every now and then, and it's really difficult to meet up with and give orders to enemy generals that are under your control. But that aside, Shadow of Mortar was a rare gamble where not only was it a movie licensed game, but it was a spin-off movie licensed game, and it not only turned out good, it turned out great. Like I said, I didn't play too many games this year, and when I sat down to think about it, I really only played four bad games this year, and starting us off at the number four spot was Watch Dogs. I have a feeling Watch Dogs could have come out like any other game, and it would have been received just fine, if not better, than most average profile games. But because of Ubisoft building so much hype behind its initial presentation, then all the controversy that surrounded it since then, suffering delay after delay, following the game's progress began to feel more and more like busy work. The final product was something along the lines of Arkham Origins, where it works okay, does its business, and then we just kind of carry on with our lives, not giving much thought to what just happened. I mean, it, it turns on, I guess. The third best game I played this year was Alien Isolation, also known as Alien We're Sorry for Colonial Marines. Alien Isolation is exactly the Aliens game fans and horror addicts have been waiting for. Steeped in atmosphere, lighting and shadows amplify the mood as you evade the alien hunting you down. The lack of heavy weapons helps you juice up the fear, and the creative how long can I last without dying survival mode is great. The music, the nods to the source material, if only it didn't sag in the middle section so much, it would have been a little higher on my list. Also, while I appreciate making manual saves the only method of saving in order to help envelop the player into the game, it's frustrating to keep playing the same 40 minute segment over and over again to the point of deterring the player from playing anymore. Nevertheless, horror games are not dead, folks. It just takes a rare talent to pull it off well. Conversely, my number three worst game was Destiny. Destiny was even more disappointing than Watch Dogs was for me, because I'm not at all into first person shooters. They have their place, they're just not my thing. But the sheer size and the scope that Destiny boasted was intriguing. Exploring whole other worlds with this huge lore of war and the sense of discovery gave the genre a whole new perspective for me. I thought, wow, this is going to be the game first person shooters need. This is going to be the entry level, the way for newcomers to get hooked onto first person shooter games and help the genre move forward a little bit more. And then the game came out and shit on all of that. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay is great, it's responsive and rewarding to say the least, but it's so small and local in size, the mechanics are almost as repetitive as the Dynasty Warriors series. And if I have to turn off your game and go onto your website to find out what the story to your game is, you done fucked up. Back to the best side, my number two game is... Heaven or Hell. Let's rock! Yeah. 
Guilty Gear XR, the long-awaited new entry in the Guilty Gear series, arrived at the tail end of the year 2014, and it was worth the wait. While most 2D fighting games get the cel-shaded treatment when a sequel gets made, Guilty Gear utilized the Unreal Engine in a new way with a shadowing technique. The 2D sprites of the previous games now are fully rendered 3D models that still retain the visual characteristics of the sprites from before. On top of the visual aesthetic, the gameplay mechanics have been improved significantly. Every mechanic, every idea that's in the game, there is an answer or a counter for it, resulting in one of the most balanced fighters in recent memory. And the tutorial doesn't just teach you how to play this game, it teaches you fighting game fundamentals, techniques that are all fighting games use. It's not as good as Skullgirl's tutorial, but it comes close. Which actually leads into my only complaint with the game, which is the story mode. For as open-ended the tutorial mode is, the story mode is the exact opposite. It's so jargon heavy, it assumes that you've been following what passes for a story in this series so far. It's off-putting to newcomers. If that was more inviting and perhaps a tag mechanic of some kind had been added, it would have placed in the number one spot, but it's no doubt my favorite fighting game of the year. By right now you're starting to get the pattern, now our number two worst game, Murdered Soul Suspect. The most David Cage game not made by David Cage. Murdered Soul Suspect thinks it's far more clever and innovative than it actually is, the result being in feeling embarrassed as you play it. Constantly bugged, the game itself almost feels possessed. You play a detective that doesn't understand how the law works, and then gets murdered, spoiler alert, and you must spend the game solving your own murder, presumably because no one else in the department knows how to do their job either. A protagonist that's duller than a rock solving a mystery no one cares about isn't the best way to go about making a murder mystery game. So then now we get to my number one, my all-time favorite game of this year that I played. Drumroll please, my number one favorite game of 2014 was... Now it's time to be naughty. You are welcome. Bayonetta 2. Nobody makes action games anymore. Nobody makes them like Platinum does. Bayonetta 2 comes out on top as my favorite game of the year because of one simple fact, it's the most fun. No other game on this list feels quite as good, as responsive, or addictingly fun as Bayonetta 2 does. The rewarding feeling for playing well is a straight shot to the pleasure centers of the brain, the wider palette of colors at 60 frames per second melts the eyes, and the fast-paced gameplay keeps your heart racing. It's tough to accurately describe the controls of a game and how it feels, but you know it when it's there in your hands and you're experiencing it. Not once did I ever feel cheapened in combat from the camera or the flimsy controls or like it wasn't tested properly. If you've ever watched characters in video games do cool stuff in the cutscenes and then you wish you could do that in the actual game, Bayonetta 2 is exactly the game you're looking for. This is a game made by people like us, people who love video games, and people who love video games will love this too. But unfortunately we can't end this on a high note, we now have to reveal my worst game of 2014, which is actually a tie. It's Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy XIII and XIII II. Why these games even exist in the first place is beyond me. The first one made bad games look good, and then they went inbred to give us these two rejects. I will never understand how this much money can be pumped into a game trilogy, require hours upon hours upon hours of playtime to complete, and still be about absolutely nothing. The characters are all paint-by-number anime stereotypes that develop about as much as a broken Polaroid. The plot is revealed not in the narrative, but in the in-menu dictionary that requires so much reading that I almost miss high school. The logic is more uneven than Shia LaBeouf, and Square Enix selling lightning sex appeal to make more off of DLC gives the whole game a layer of filth that makes me want to wash my hands every time I so much as look at the game.